Tom Hartman is going to compare capitalism to slavery. He argues the difference is in renting or owning. Let's take a look. Brian in Encino, California. Hey, Brian, what's on your mind? Thanks for listening to SiriusXM. Thanks. Uh, it just occurred to me that uh, if you compare slavery versus capitalism, slavery, the business owner has to purchase the human outright and provide basic clothing, keep it relatively safe and healthy, feed it. Uh, with capitalism, the business owner merely rents a human for the bare minimum required by law. See, we are off to a rough start. No, the difference lies in force. I cannot force you to work for me under capitalism. In slavery, one could make you work under the threat of violence. Markets do not require violence to operate. Also, are you ignoring the fact that workers negotiate their wages? Some may take the minimum wage, but there are a good portion of people that will advocate for themselves for a higher wage. If the shop owner does not want to hire for that cost, the worker is free to take his or her business elsewhere. Let's say Dunkin' Donuts is hiring for $11 an hour. Starbucks is hiring for $15 an hour. In that equation, there are two choices. Now let's talk about hours. Sure, Starbucks may pay $15 an hour, but what of the hours? Starbucks may have you work less hours, so Dunkin' Donuts would be the better option in the long run. You could make more or less with a lower wage with more hours. Using rent to describe wages is polarizing and downright dishonest. Letting the human pick up the cost for everything else. So... Uh, capitalism is held up as a sort of example to give more freedoms and, and such, but that's not true because most of our waking hours are spent either at work or getting ready for work, traveling to work, traveling home from work, leaving very little time for actual freedom. Work or starve fallacy. Starvation is the default. Every species has had to work to survive. Humans have found a way to reduce time spent working in a free market system. People in free markets can afford televisions, cars, and ACs. We found a way of making work worthwhile by having a free market where we can exchange goods. We have an incentive to grow in an individualist system. In a collectivist system, there isn't. If the guy next to you gets the same as you and does half the work, what incentive is there to work? We have higher standards of living under free markets than non-free markets. Look, Hartman, you're in a studio. You're in a studio broadcasting to thousands. How did that happen? What went into building the studio, the radio, and all that allows you to broadcast? And then most people just don't have money to spend when they're done with it to enjoy that freedom, the few hours that they might have. So Habits are key. How you live will determine how much money you have left. You could spend it or save it or spend it on someone else. What you do with your money is your concern. My only concern is to preserve your ability to choose what you do with your money. Freedom is not being free from hardship, nor is it always being blessed with riches. It is only the condition where we have the choice to better ourselves and grow as a result. I'm not defending slavery. I'm just saying capitalism itself isn't a, uh, some kind of panacea to like provide freedoms for everybody. Oh, I absolutely so agree. Like, and this this is why I, I in my article for Alternate today, I didn't call it slavery. I called it indentured servitude because I don't want to minimize the horrors of slavery in the United States. It's like they're almost identical. Here's something you've never thought of. You own yourself. If someone claims ownership over you, then that is invalid. Likewise, if you sell yourself off, that too is invalid, since someone would exercise control over you. The only way that this could work is that if there were statutes that allowed you to leave. In indentured servitude, there were some protections, but they were seldom enforced. You know, not calling something the Holocaust because you don't want to minimize what happened to, to Jews in Europe in, in, the, in the 40s. 30s and 40s, but but this is from, from my article. I said, historically, indentured servants had their food, health, health care, housing, and clothing provided to them by their, quote, employers, end quote. Slavery is not a free market. It is diametrically opposed to it. In one, you have wages. In one, you have ownership over a human being that does the work for you. Those are two exclusive concepts. Today's new serfs can hardly afford these basics of life. When you add in modern necessities like transportation, education, and childcare, the Amer American labor landscape is looking more and more like old-fashioned 
servitude. Did you just compare serfdom to employment? First of all, the rising costs of goods and services are a result of monetary policy. Second, there are lots of regulations that stunt new firms from entering the marketplace, thus keeping prices high at the expense of the consumer. Everything you are talking about is a result of government intervention, not the free market. And, uh, and, and then I point out that, you know, Missouri just... You know, after St. Louis raised their minimum wage to $10, Missouri dropped the entire state back down to seven seventy. It's like they really want it this way. Brian Well said, thank you so much. Minimum wage is another policy which hinders upward mobility, especially among minorities and women. See my video, Minimum Wage is Racist, and Shane Killian's playlist. I hope you guys liked the video. Please subscribe, ring the bell, and always remember to stay free.